Hello everyone and welcome to the podcast. I'm Stephen Mason. It's the podcast for arachnophobia. And I am pressing play. Now, now apologies if you clicked on this thinking you're watching arachnophobia. Arachnophobia is quite sought after. It is available on DVD and hasn't seen its, uh, let's sort of say, deservingly um, 4K Blu-ray release. Um, it's a long lost gem. Obviously it's got a lush front cover on the DVD, which I think, to be honest with you, there is some artwork right there. It's Juice Drusen, isn't it? It's around that era. It's it's a uh, uh, pops up in a lot of uh, contrast artwork. The spider's just up to the uh, corner, and there's an artwork where it's sort of like the spiders tingling from the the moon. Now the last podcast I did was Wolf, and Wolf has a very similar colour scheme to the front cover on this. So yeah, um, arachnophobia. Now Carl McSorley was meant to join us today, but Carl is ill. So this is a very unplanned, uh, and I've just picked some that I've seen recently that has no extra features. This belongs in the touchdown, uh, Touchstone artwork. Amblin, Steven Spielberg has his fingers in it. Frank Marshall directed, obviously, the director of Shawshank Redemption and The Mist. Jeff Daniels stars as a as the headliner. Julian Sands, who's no longer with us, bless him. And John Goodman. Uh, actually seen Julian Sands at Horicon. He was a replacement a couple of years ago. He had a few hits with, like... There is Julian Sands there, Whitlock, and unfortunately was lost in a hiking trip in California and eventually found for more peace of mind of anyone in his family, which, you know, um, quite a uh, strong actor. He's been quite a lot, a lot in Stargate he was, came a lot in Stargate on there. But again, this film I've always liked. Um, I've seen it as a kid, my mum's terrified of spiders, and I remember me and my mum while I was really young seeing this and no one wanted to sleep that night. But again, a lot of it's done with really good um, like locations here. Um, it's got a very Crocodile Dundee vibe where they actually go to the location and you show you the location, not look like using stock footage or, you know, like little made up sets to go that way. Now I am transferring footage in the background. Um, as I say, I'm double barrel on this. I'm keeping myself occupied. I do apologize. Um, if my phone beeps or anything like that, I do have it on standby, but what's happening? Um, some amazing shots. Um, as I said, needs a Blu-ray release. Um, extra features, I thought this was one Arrow might get up, but like obviously the Touchstone titles just seem to uh, are there on... I mean, I'm not even sure if this is on Disney+. Plus. It would make sense if it'd been on Disney+. Plus. I think it takes a picture of the bird flying there. Um, but there the camera guy reminds me a bit of uh, the relic the relic has a very similar start where the guy's out there and he takes the drugs and freaks out and he's like on the same kind of expedition um the guy there the co-pilot there in the front he is from um crocodile dundee 2 he's popped up in a few things got a nice little rustling going on in the background there zzz, zzz, computer going but yeah some helicopter shots um good score as well Hollywood Pictures and Amblin Entertainment presents nice sleepy town picture there and just a spider. Um, wow, I do apologise to the computer, but again, it is pushing a uh, eight gig file across at the second. But yeah, we're in for um, an hour and five minutes. There's some stunning locations. I mean, just look at that. Um, now it's CGI and they'll do that, but they are some spectacular stunts. And obviously they go into the deepest bits of the Amazon. Again, the discovery of it as well. It's trying to set it in a place where there is a bit of a discovery and stuff like that. Where, you know, oh, what the fuck. Like, this is like one of the locations where you'd find the lost world or a lost dinosaur or some kind of a lizard. And these hidden rainforests is taken away from civilization, has no involvement or any contact with mankind and stuff like that to have like you know what I mean is like, oh we can now got a helicopter we can now go there we can now make these voyages of stuff um, but yeah and then oh, all the equipment the catch and the spiders I always remember a book my granddad read to us when I was a kid god knows what the book was called but it was always about a group of people trying to get to a summit of a, um, a cliff and finding the way in and up it and stuff like that you know Especially like the Uncharted stuff, I mean, 
almost everything's discovered in the UK these days, but there is places out there which just look to be a bit of a myth. You know, could there possibly be? I know Peter Jackson said King Kong in the era he wanted to just because of, um, you know, the last place of discovery, you know, because stuff does not get discovered and gets missed off. And it's hard, especially with social media and stuff, given a bit of a surprise, given a bit of a um, who goes there. I mean, at the end of the day, they're pretty much on the end of the cliff there. Just chucked that away for the shot. But getting the cameras up there, there's, you know what I mean? There's some real parrots flying past. <laughs> like, okay, now it'll be CGI. I I watched some terrible film last night, and it is the sequel to um, Without a Paddle. I watched Without a Paddle, then I watched um, its sequel. And man, the sequel was absolutely pants. And they used CGI on everything with a terrible opening screen. So, yeah. But, yeah. Julian Sands. And a very similar character to the guy who goes missing in The Relic. Um, the Relic has seen a Blu-ray release. So, I don't know why this one hasn't been. Roger Rabbit, Touchstone Film. And The Rocketeer, off the top of my head, of two Touchstone Films are on Disney Plus and have had physical media release. Um... Well, there we go, the big tree. Now, this is a set. This is something like Indiana Jones kind of set, um, I would say. Oh, they've got the big-ass tree in the middle of this. Getting the equipment drilled down. I mean, imagine now exploring something like this. They've just brought one guy and a camera. Like now, vlogs, drones, you name it, cameras, GoPros. Like, wait! Don't go down there yet. And also as well, like um, when they did this, like the isolation of not having your mobile phone, like you're fucked. <laughs> if something goes wrong, you're fucked. Um, and there we go. First idea of that. There's something down there as a spider. Battling the death with uh, that. So yep, yeah, I'm just doing some file transfer. As uh, I thought, I'll get a podcast in the can. We have Wolf hasn't come out yet. Um, Wolf's due out, so I thought I'll get on top of that. Um, today as well, I thought the podcast I was going to do would have been uh, Dream a Little Dream Two, um, because me and uh, called it Dream a Little Dream a while back now, and I've just decorated my um, wardrobe. Cupboard downstairs, wardrobe cupboard, whatever. Um, and listen to Dream a Little Dream, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, here you go. Taking pictures of the webs and stuff like that. Um, slug season at the moment in my house. I've had two massive slugs the last couple of days. I don't get many spiders. But yeah. Uh, setting them all up. Gonna smoke them out and collect stuff. Collecting samples to study. This totally feels like kind of never ending story kind of set. Never end story was a possibility for a podcast, but I know it's got a really good audio comedy with the director and he's interviewed in it as well. And I think it's if uh, a film's got there that I can do a podcast for um, I kind of feel it's wrong to do it without absorbing the commentary in, in some way. So, yeah. Sorry, there's a few clicks and kicks all over there. I've got a few things to sort. As the smoke rises. Anyway, I told the studio shot to get these high angle low bearing shots coming down. And then just the sort of dunk, dunk, dunk. <laughs> yeah, Julian Sands is quite creepy in um, Stargate. Atlantis he's in actually. It's... There you go. Here comes the leaves and then <laughs> A couple of spiders come down.
And yeah, gone all the way there, catch a put of flies. And he gets a shock, doesn't he? Because the spider comes to get him later on, doesn't it? Bits, he bites his foot. Bites him on the toe. This South American kind of vibe. Spielberg was everywhere, like, wasn't he? He was. He was literally everywhere. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I'm just there uh, prepping what I need to do. Uh, sort that out. The guy popped up in a few things. Um, I don't think I've seen him in a while. Spider, big ass spider. And they have a bit of practical thing, jumped on him. Other spiders looking down, there it is, it's pissed. This is like an angry ass spider, this. Stand on it. There you go, he's got one specimen. And a real spider, now that was CGI. I jumping around in there and you know it's a perfect reaction. I mean the spider might just sit there. I mean so couldn't be one of those spiders, it's coming to get you. And again, the low shots as well, Lord, some of that works really well for it. Um and the fact that it's so small and deadly. This is a PG though, and I think this is one of the ones where, like, holy shit, like, 12 wasn't around when this was released, and I think it's a borderline 15 for, like, the horror, but because it's just a spider, look, there you go, there it is, yeah, you go, Whew. you know, and then a couple of, like, put it there. Again, look at the backdrop they've got there, secure the locations, um, you know, you're trying to make it serious, but it is a movie about spiders, you know, and it's done on a big scale, because now... Like eight legged freaks or spiders, um, anything like that's just normally just taken out of content. It's hard to bring the film down to like a serious tone that this does, and you know, it gives you a shiver. Like, oh, what's called across my legs? Um, when I was um, doing my video recently, last resort last year, a spider actually crawled across my face when I was sitting here and there's some aftermath footage and I was actually generally freaked out because it had just ran across my face and it wasn't like, I mean I was high at the time but there was a spider because I seen it after there like but uh, yeah it's just crazy man alright now as he, he drinks he's feeling a bit under the weather I need to as it comes to get him just prep to what I'm doing. Excuse me for two minutes. He's about to get bit. I'm going to cardiac arrest. Crawls up his leg. Itsy bitsy spider. And just is about to look, and you get to see the shots as well. There you go. Like I mean, practical effect there. This is actually quite, um, you know, the other shot. He's been a bit, and again, hire an actor to have some kind of seizure like that. I bet that's not an easy thing to do. You could stress yourself out with doing something like that and actually get into a seizure. I think. Right, so I'm in here for a while. <laughs> and yeah, he dies very quickly, quite suddenly. A little bit of blood. And yeah, gone. 
Oh, there's some big ass files I need to transfer today. Homemade coffin. And off he goes. Smoking on film as well, and it's a PG. Whoosh. Yeah, I'm in for a, a while here. And there you go, there's the little spider legs again. And, just like in the relic, he gets nailed in his box. I think there's a lot more clear than the relic what's going on at this point because, like, the relic and the statue and the zooming in on the statue and you think, what's it got to do with the statue? And then the leaves. But yeah, it's a nice little uh, little casket they've made them though, considering they're out there in the middle of nowhere. Craftsmanship. There's some amazing videos of all them craftsmen that make them little like underground houses and stuff. Right now, here we go. New town, new rules. Bit of a Beetlejuice vibe, I think, for the time as well. Um, and a definitely an introduction to Americana movies. And seeing this, you know, um, you know, moving to small town. He's a trained doctor. He's relocating his whole family to a small village to set up his practice. And the stubborn old guy refuses to go, even though he's already agreed to take the patients on. Again, though, in America, where you pay a doctor to look after you. Um, because it's obviously almost impossible sometimes to get a doctor's appointment over here. I think that's some of that is quite insane sometimes. There you go, the funeral home. You know, one place to do one business. Very um, New Zealand vibes as well for me personally on this. Again, the body. So obviously here's the body coming into town. It wasn't the guy moving to town. The uh, guy who's the mortician is the same guy from Total Recall. And I get a whiff of him. Again, morticians always have like a, um, you know, a kind of like dry sense of humour. Must be a fucking deep job, Lil death and knowing what's going to be death and getting into death. Now enough time passes here for the spider to uh, get out. Okay, is the cat going to get it? It's got the spider. Yeah. He makes his little uh, speech there. There's a spider there. It's creeping. Just enough. Just to get you on edge thinking, oh, what's going to happen? Bring them suspense. And there you go, the reveal. Again, this is a PG. Um, he's been drained pretty much by the spider. Um, great shots for the spider. Again, using the animatronics, but using the reflection in the, the thing to create, like, hide the effect in a way. Here's the dog, dog's point of view. Great reactions by the dog and the, the cat. Obviously, the cat, I think the, does the cat, no, the bird dies. Obviously, the dog's not stupid. Uh, cat's not stupid either. Um, and then you just get enough to realize the size of this spider. And then you go, boom, bird gets it, and then the bird suddenly just dies, doesn't it? And then the bird drops it off at the new house. And then, <laughs> you know, to me it's just like, like, shoot that bird right there. These are the family moving in. Jeff Daniels, um, obviously Dumb and Dumber Speed, uh, been around, um, obviously done a lot of TV work over the years. Um, I think he plays this really good. Um, kind of like he suits this role um he always kind of has sometimes like a pissed off kind of look i know he wasn't happy about speed and didn't want to be in speed and thought he thought his career was pretty much going down the pan with speed um i know that from the commentary of it and he was meant to be the um the twist bad guy it wasn't meant to be dennis hopper it was meant to be him um harry um 
but I think he is a really good actor, especially Dumb and Dumber. Um, Fly Away Home and that would follow. Um, Two Days in the Valley. But again, there's always a scent of the spider there, and I think the big spider takes a back seat once it gets into the barn as the moving companies are on. Obviously, shown that he's got a fetish for wine. I hate wine. Never been a wine man. I he's going to sacrifice his wine at the end. And I'm looking at the cellar. You don't get that much now. Like I just recently had the opportunity to move or work, and it was only I wouldn't have to move house. It was like sixty miles. You kind of think fucking hell. Like over there when they were relocating and all that, um, you're talking days traveling. Like the UK is tiny compared to America and Russia and Canada. Jesus Christ. You know what I mean? Just don't realize when a movie says, "Oh, they're moving," or oh, someone's dead in it. Summit's dead. Oh, the car. That's the spider. You know, I've seen a movie recently called The Martian Child with John Cusack. And um, it's got PG and it's like a feel-good family movie. And like, his dog dies in it and he comes in, the kid's crying. And he's like, oh, what's wrong? And he, the dog's just there. And the dog's just lying on the floor. And it's like, what's wrong? Oh, he's just dead. And I tell you what, that was proper like, oh. That would to me be a 12. I just wouldn't have that in. It was horrible. Because, oh, here goes the spider. Again, great animatronics cast between real life spiders. Um, and then she's going to put the little bit of spider in the barn. Obviously, barns were a lot of big thing as a kid for me. Critters I would have seen around this time. Um, watches are set in a barn. Oh, I wouldn't see watches for a couple of years. It just seemed like a lot of like horror stuff would be in a barn. Don't go in the barn after midnight. And obviously Field of Dreams vibe, um, small country house uh, surrounded by um, that. Obviously massive love for Justified as well for the kind of location it gives us. Um, but yeah. Score by the way is by... Is by... Trevor Jones who I think has done quite a few things. Um... But yeah, Dread by French Well. The soundtrack on Hollywood Records, they were really pushing it like. Suspense, killer spiders, some moderate horror, sexual nudity, none. There's a lass in the shower? How can it say none? <laughs> I know you don't see no bits, but. You know, I, whatever. Strong, strong medium language. Ah, it's very, uh, definitely shouldn't have been an 18, I don't think. Some lone shots, not what's going on, nice and creepy. Another film with a barn, Silver Bullet. Friday the 13th. Oh, Spider Love. Spider Love. <laughs> and yeah. The romance is blossoming. So, the general practitioner, this is the old guy, Samuel. He's just like, nah, I'm not retiring, fuck you. That's basically much what's going on there. And I think, really good cast. I think the guy is cast really well because he doesn't want to do it. And, you know, stubbornness of, like, it, that happens. Old people sometimes, like, give it up. And it's their own right not to give it up. I mean, would you give it up? Like, you have no right to tell someone to give up until, like, for example, when we had to take my granddaughter's license away. You're driving on the wrong side of the road around a roundabout. Do you not think you should give your driving license away um, in the retirement? And he just he refuses to do it. Um, and then the new doctor becomes Dr. Death. And uh, it's also as, as an underlying thing about, like, his... Um, his... Uh, been under um sorry what's the thing like challenging and dr death and the guy retracting and then the new local sheriff the parking meter going down you know welcome to the small town getting off to a great start with everybody feels isolated as well you know there's a fire hydrant right next to doctors pleasant phil 
um, Jeff Daniels is in that as well. Um, uh, I just found some root beer at uh, Aldi's last week. I'm over the moon. She walks in. She's about to die. One of the first victims, if not the first. I think she gets killed by going for the light switch. Driving a BM. Ripping up his ticket. She's got a form of fundraisers. An art gallery there. There's a fucking palm tree. That feels totally fucking out of place. Another podcast What was on the card was The Fog. But I just never got the opportunity to get around to filming it. Um... We were doing that. Uh, John Carlton has got a really good insight on that. And again, I just like try to absorb as much information. But when a film like this has literally no, it's bare bones. It doesn't even have a menu screen. Just starts playing. So I'll go for it. Moving into a house, a lot of work. Girls setting up playing outside. I think I don't know what I would prefer. Like obviously there, like uh, the houses and all that would. Me and Carl were talking about dream a little dream, and Carl was like, houses over here are built the last, and houses over there were very IKEA-ish. I think quoting on Carl on that, and just looking there at the walls, and it's like all wood, and you know, termites becomes a big factor, and later on when the floor gives way and shit. Um, But yeah, I think Jeff Daniels carries it. I think he carries weight. I think he carries like a lot on his mind. Um, she is standing right in the shadow there, like on her face. Check out the printer he's got going there. She seems to should be just standing a little bit more to the left in the actual light, but there you go. You get there, you've bought a house, you've made the commitment. And there we go, boom. Again, New Zealand vibes all over here. I uh, just feel like the, the actual buildings and all that. And he's set up, um, his first client is 100% healthy. Again, if they're paying each appointment to go in. Um, I'll tell you a funny story at the, uh, for a minute, because obviously, I've been experiencing a few problems with the dentist lately. Not like it's problems, but like you go down and I had to change dentists because I'm sure my other dentist died in COVID. I ain't heard shit. And like, um, he's that thing I was talking about before where she's been told she needs to be on this tablet. He says he doesn't need to be on the tablet. She dies. He blames her for taking off the tablets and stuff like that. So there's that kind of like... He's the new upcoming guy and the old guy does not want to give in and he's just too bone idle and he gets his commitments for being stubborn till the end. But yeah, you go to the dentist and you go in and I remember I went down a few fillings and I went downstairs and I'm like, that's £490. I went, you what? And like, they just seem to make prices up like if it's not on the NHS and you've got the NHS, you got your blooper care and you got your private care and all for the insurance companies and shit like that. But like as a thing to go like the fuck can you just come up with a price like that? Now, talking about this and I'm going, um Lincoln was painting my living room and obviously Lincoln's painted the shop and I've seen Lincoln quite a few times and he's sitting there painting my living room. And while we were painting the living room, I was like, What the fuck's that noise? I'd been putting in the bathroom. And the bath hadn't not long been in and it just turned the water back on and I was like, can I hear dripping? And all I could hear is, ns, ns, ns. Not as loud as that, but like I could hear something. But all, all the time. So I was looking around and I think I went, can you hear that? And I went, can you hear that? Because I can hear it, can't I? And he's like, yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, it's me. I've got a pacemaker. And I went, you what? <laughs> and obviously every time he touched the wall and he's moving, it, it was pacemaker. Um, so this is a thing coming up here when she takes a picture of the new spider web and it gets presented and it's obviously a big ending to the movie where they discover where the actual nest is so it's really good little bits by little um, 
so yeah, Lincoln had told me a story about obviously he's got his um, robotic heart and all this kinds of stuff, and he's uh, was in America, and I think his origins are Chicago, and he was covered by his travel insurance, and he said like he got taken in just for you know some route tests and everything needs tests when you go in, especially if you're going with a level of his pacemaker, and he said the medical bills alone were 17, 17 or twenty grand. Just felt like a shade didn't feel right when in the void, and that's how much the insurance came back on the enclave and stuff. And I was like, "Fucking hell!" So like, you think about the medical bills and all that, and private medical bills, like it's crazy. And like, obviously, we've got the NHS over here. Like, I, for a similar thing, I got carted off to A um, uh, and E uh, just over a year ago for my heart, and I might have talked about this on other stuff, but like. I didn't feel right one day and I hadn't been feeling right for a while and I'm 40 now and um, I'd actually ripped my tip muscle but because I'm all tattooed the bruising wasn't shown um, so the cart was off and they had me on scans, chest x-rays, um, blood pressure, heart tracer um, I didn't even know what the fuck was going on then they gave us a packed lunch and then took us in a room and were like, like look this is what you've done right? and I was like oh, I'm still going to have to go to work tonight and like me and Lincoln had a very similar conversation about similar things because again it's around the heart area and stuff like that. Now his was more complex and time consuming because of his uh, pacemaker and stuff. But can you imagine that? Oh, I just went to the hospital today. What did it cost you? 20 grand. <laughs> it's just like, what? But what's the price of life? Do you know what I mean? So again, it's like, yeah, it's obviously big business and small business. But back when this was based, small town, one doctor was enough. Do you know what I mean? Um, but again, one doctor not being up with the times, practicing new medication, um, being very clued on about breakthroughs and procedures and that, and you know it is what the town needs, and he he comes full circle, you know. Two cars, house, kid, just the one kid, isn't it? The island is the friend across the street. Look at them rocks along the path. To see got enough to hit them. <laughs> American mailboxes. So yeah, uh, there's a movie called Twenty Four by Thirty Five. It's the movie about movie posters. Uh, Arachnophobia is featured on that with the spider coming down between the full moon on the front cover, and I just think. It's totally missing from the artwork over here. Um, but this needs a Blu-ray. I mean, it looks really good on DVD. And the screen I do the podcasts on is ridiculously sharp. And, um, yeah, spider web in his yard, in the shed. Um, but, yeah, that's a big-ass thing, though. Wolf, the end of the wolf was in a barn. I couldn't even fit a shed in my back garden. I had to give it to Mitch. I built a new shed in lockdown at the old house and I had to literally uh, give it a Mitch because it wouldn't fit in the new house's yard and I've got a retainer wall so like you know oh no is he scared of got bladders or has he got a phobia he falls though doesn't he the cat gets him does the cat get him no bird somebody gets him Do, 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 do. It's a big ass spider web like. So it gets him. Yep, yeah, top one breaks. S oh, yeah, so it gets him. Oh. Rat's dead. Real mouse there. And now he looked a bit more closer. There's an egg sack. And again, all practical. All that. Running out there. 
nicely like sunset and uh, baby spiders real spiders each one of them venomous oh there's another cat there's a garden party oh, I'll tell you what film I was going to do do Problem Child 2 but then I would have to do Problem Child 1, but Problem Child 1 isn't as fresh as Problem Child 2. Problem Child 2 is the one. <sighs> oh, there she is. She's never aged. She's been in so many movies. She's in... Um Never too late, she's in When singer is she in? No, she's she the girl she's the grandma and Happy Gilmore and stuff, yeah. Never aged. <laughs> see you can see the fake spider there just resting around there. Go on my minions. Go, go, my lovelies. Go, my lovelies, scatter my towards the house. Spider Wrangler. Oh, he wants to look at them all, doesn't he? Gil hip tosses him. Uh, he's the football coach, isn't he? Because he throws the work there, and also I think blossom hair on the side there. I think he gets bitten in the spider helmet. But again, it shows you how the small town. Again, it's something like actually happens. That oh my god, look, he's like. Um, Dr. Death and in the instant point the blame at the new outsider as well I think that's another underground uh, tone with the movie Man, Dr. Death I see a bit of a drink going on here So we're getting through this one quite quickly. Carl hasn't replied, I've been called dead. As I said, my plan is today to get this mastered and then um, uploaded. Again, it's because it's not the recording of it. The mastering of it takes time and the uploading as well. But yeah, if you still listen to me at this point, you probably think, is this movie ever going to start? Or you actually do listen to these. Oh. So she's the first victim coming up. Yeah. I think it's later on that day as well, and she when she's getting ready. Reaches up for a um thing and boof gone. <laughs> she's taking all the food. So you don't get much of that round here at all, ever, you know what I mean? It's kind of like, you know, small towns, big things. Oh, does the cat get killed? Or does the cat piss off? There it is. Again, really good cameras to get that kind of quality. See, the spider's there in shot. She doesn't realise it. It's sitting there, it's unsure. It's assessing the situation. She's still on the clean up after a day. The spider's gonna go down. 
just misses the cut. That kind of feels like that was a little bit of a CGI shot. Uh, the spider just looked a little bit um, a different shell as it moved. Again, for timing wise of the cut. And of course, the cut into the night. Um, and yeah, spiders on the move. Uh, again, though, the timing of getting a spider to do that and her walking in on cues and multiple takes and a lot of patience, I would imagine, with this. And she reaches up and zap. Yeah, I've got to electrocute it off the plug, plug in the cupboard. Kissing goodbye. There we see the audience, the spider, the Emerald Doom, the out of focus shot, and boom! Oh, these are harsher cut, I would say. There you go he's building his uh, wine shed. All these tools. Fucking nail gun. Again, the wood and all that. <sighs> it's just literally falling with fucking bits. Fucking nails coming through the floor and all that, man. Imagine that, nail gun come through. <laughs> oh, they do have two kids. <clears throat> da, da, da. Jeff Daniels shaking his head. No report of her death yet, but it's about to come. Obviously, don't they dig her body back up, don't they? Oh, yeah, it goes to see her. Oh, she's dead. Cat can't get in. Hello? Signs of a struggle. Heart attack. <laughs> I took her off those. Why did you do that? And again as well, like you've got the kind of, the age doesn't really matter and the kind of personality between the two of them. I don't know if they're father and son, I don't think so, but it's the stubbornness of like, off on the wrong foot straight away. Like, you roll a day. <laughs> well, people get like that when they get angry of walks of life. You might have not done anything wrong with them, but that's it. Today, your life is ruined. That's how society keeps going. <laughs> Ready to use one of the next ones to go. I'm not sure if it's him to go or the mortician. Mortician by popcorn, and he gets bits on the toe. Fucking hell, it's a quick funeral. But again, it's you know over here. It happens so quickly. Um, funerals can take ages to do, but you know, again, mortician's already there. 
small town. Who died this year? It's a thing. He's lost his only client now. He's drinking a bottle of red wine. See, I don't think I could do that. Sit there and just stare. He's just staring at a chair. <laughs> just like, right, that chair. I'm watching that chair and drinking wine. I don't think I could just sit there and drink. Um, I drink in the house Enton in videos and um, there's a lot of time between clicking and waiting and then you get absorbed in the stuff and um, we are still restorating a few bits and bobs but that's nearly finished the restorating we've been doing the last couple of years to be honest with you I really should get on top of that but um, I'm always seeming to be on the go uh, I don't think I could generally sit there and stare at a chair like he is I mean he's got a lot in his mind I don't think I can drink red wine though. Definitely not drink white wine. And here he comes, Bugs Be Gone. Uh, was he John Goodman. In one of his earlier roles, obviously he'd been in uh, Roseanne at this point, um, but I don't think anyone had realized how much of a uh, like household name and actor he would become. The Flintstones would follow a few years after that. Uh, we had King Ralph, um, Big Lebowski. So by the mid nineties, he was just literally a juggernaut. He has been in some crap though. I watched the one with him, John Cusack, the week called Jack Bull, and he pops up on that for a bit. It was a really badly made movie. But he's the bug guy and all the termites and the wood rot and bugs be gone. Look at the floor coming down. But surely they would have known about that before the rented a bought. Unless the bought they must have bought. Shows his interest in the wine. He's a good actor, John Goodman. Though. I've seen The Hangovers as well recently, more recent. Even though The Hangovers are coming up to be 10 years old. Like, Jesus. Even longer than that. So it becomes a school doctor. See gymnasiums. Let's get the boys tested. See shit like that didn't happen in my school, you know, the gyms and all that kind of stuff. Like you expect to go to the gym on the Friday and I was talking about this with my school friends recently. I was just like, we couldn't even have showers in school and like that wouldn't even be deemed of. Do you know what I mean? First thing Friday morning, right? It's not like the last thing of the day on a Friday. PE and just how bad it was and like your, me your medical proficiency, you know, like in school, the doctor should be going around checking for stuff, you know what I mean? It's just seemed a lot of places have it more. They said there was no nudity in this film. Boys in the box shorts. See here, cough. Like, cough. But again, it's like joked about, but it's a serious thing to be doing. I mean, that wouldn't happen now, would it? Touching men's cocks. He hasn't even got any gloves on. Do you know what I mean? It's just like, did he even put any gloves on there? He's just walked along and touched every guy's cock. Like, all right, okay. Brilliant. Well done. Itsy bitsy spiders on the run again. Oh, touched the bum. Again, that looked a bit CGI, but then it's just here. Yeah. Trial and error. And the star quarterback is about to have his head pushed.
crawls in his helmet. Gets him in. Boom! Gives him a slap as he's going past. Get in there. He's already dead. Crunch. Hit hard. Again though, he's wanting work, Doctor, alright, the football team. Should Doctor should be on standby for shit like that? There you go. Spider's a runner. No one sees a spider. No one out of all them see the spider, but they hide it with the helmet and the foot. It's off. It's struck. He's dead. They call him Doctor Death. <laughs> Another funeral. Again, he's now stirring the pot. So it's not Blondie who got killed. Blondie's just there. And obviously the kids are upset. Dr. Death is now attacking the place. Can't believe you. Your dad's Dr. Death. So sort of that as well is like sometimes when you get films like this and you go, oh, but yeah, look at the kid, kid actor growing up there, or the, uh, the, the mom like becomes more famous than the lead role. But you know, Jeff Daniels, um, your car is it? Here he goes, he's doing his keep fit, he's about to get bitten on the foot, and she gets killed as well, doesn't she? The spider just takes them both out. <laughs> that tries to get on the Pierce Master box. Is it funny? Real life spider down a treadmill. And again, now goes in the shoes. It's got a. Takes his trainers off. Bare feet are out. Oosh. Oh, it's cold. Oh, and I'm shooting. And bite! Again. Just a spider. She does as well, doesn't she? I found Dr. Death. <laughs> I love it how zero fucks are given because he's been a twat to her. Oh, she, she's dead as well, isn't she? He's dead in the bed. Oh shit. Oh, she might not be dead. Spider got him. Oh, she might not be dead. I'm mean, making things up for the crack. the bite on his shoe, on his toe. Get some gloves on, you're going to be touching something that just killed him. Don't go around touching cocks like that guy was before. No, she, she hasn't died. 
suppose you need her not to die, you know, because she, she now knows that. She can tell him, oh, Spider did it. Oh, yeah, What's it? where's the connection? Because you need to kind of get this moving along a bit. Say, oh. I've got them tonsils, boy. Now his business is going to be booming. A big smile on his face. She's nailing stuff up in the wall. But again though, like, taking that many patients on, you want that patient kind of care thing. So now he starts getting interested, so. And obviously here, Julian Sands returns. No, it's not. Oh my God, five to five already. You got a pimped up office, like, have you look at that? I feel like I'm in lost, I can hear voices, it must be somewhere out of the back. Angry guy. He kind of turns though, he turns the cheek when he realizes it's danger though, isn't it? So he's like, right, okay. And then he walks out. No shit. Blasting his BMW down there. Now they're going over for a sleepover. Stay away from spiders. As he's going to say. You see a spider, run! Dr. Death! <laughs> I mean, imagine that, checking the house of spiders. Did you even start with that? Yeah, I've checked the whole house for spies. Right, start again. <laughs> it's a big house. Let's see, got a good old fashioned uh, scary story time. And, uh, we can see the spies. That looks like a fuzzy bear in the background. I mean that's terrifying in its own right, the doll actually like seeing the the eyes open and stuff like that too. See it, see spider. It's a bit see spider. And up the spout, down came the rain. <laughs> it was the spider out. Oh, paperwork. Not one computer I've seen. I mean, I've seen a print at the start, but like no computer, no mobile phones. Isolation, paperwork, yellow pads, notes. Dotting the T's and crossing the I's. Spire of the worlds. Obviously, he's trying to identify the toxicology of it in there and the unknown that and like the venom of it. Because obviously, 
Wee. Again, massive jump scare. It's just a little uh, cricket, but Jeff Daniels' reaction, the timing, obviously the music probably is a big cure of it. But yeah. Even though this is a dark movie, I kind of feel a feel-good movie. I feel a warmth for it as well. The colour palette, um, I think is one thing, but... Oh yes, the cellar. The cellar dweller. Oh, it's it's moving house and it's bringing its sack with it. There you go. It's brought its little sack. It's moving in. It's taking over. Julian Sands is back. Obviously he takes the phone call and sends his assistant. Okay. I have got a lot of transfer there. And looks like he's still got one of the spiders. Hey, look. some weight in this file I've just uh, moved like an itsy bitsy spider that's what's coming out everyone remember the uh, playing limbo for the first time when the spider just comes out the tree and it's like <gasps> fuck <laughs> terrifying Or the spider in um, Resident Evil. Which I remember playing Resident Evil and not dying when I first bought the spider. Digging the bodies up. Excursion. Coroners. So you don't send that, but... He, he's quite a good actor. I mean, I feel like I've seen him in loads more stuff, but I don't think I have. Um, I don't know. There's a death. Toe bite. Obviously, they put two and two together for... The photographer they had. Oh, he's actually wearing gloves for once. Wasn't wearing them when he touched them people's beliefs. <laughs> and I had to see there, oh, here comes the coroner. Bag of crisps in hand. Yep, dead. Oh, yes. crisps but again he sort of gets exposed because he missed it bitten on the hand and then background as well bitten on the hand he knows the cue and there you're not meant to be looking and then he finds it behind the head we know it's behind the head Then back to Julian Sands, who's going to show a little bit of interest as we pan in. See if, you can spy, see if you can find me a specimen. Because <laughs> uh, there's one in the... Um, you go looking for one, don't they? 
Oh yes, so this gets me here every time. There you go. Right, that there, right, is a spider on the wall. But again, this is fucking with your own imagination. Spider on the wall, and he gets up, and at what point do they change it? Because right, that shot there is a spider. He sees it again. That's definitely a spider. He's got his comic book. He's going to give it a good smack. He's getting up. He's getting ready. He's armed. He's dangerous. Four corner bed. Creeping up. And now it's changed. And now it's changed to a coat hanger and a reflection of a shadow. And he realises that. But until that point there, that is a spider on the wall. Because that's totally different. Someone on IMDb going, no, 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 no. If you look, it's, yeah, it's correct. I bet I, I whatever. We've got nice, a nice little team now going, haven't they? For a specimen. I'm looking around a house for a spider. You mean you're shitting yourself, man? It's not like. Right, let's go look for a shark in a lake. It's like, right, it could be anywhere. Could be the fucking bush. Could be the fucking. It's over there! <laughs> it's a thing murderous. Tea, like again though, like ah, oh, fucking teacups, like the heavens swinging down. Ah. It's like turning everything into like it's gonna get you. <laughs> the fucking horror film. I would put this in horror. Again, one would be in the cornflakes. Ah! <laughs> he screams. So I think we're just over the halfway point. Um, coroner's yet to die. Julian Sands is about to turn up, and he dies. Um, We've got John Goodman who comes back like a rain of hell in a bit. And there you go. Ah! It's dead. Yeah, the assistant Spider-Man looks a bit like Afron Jones. That's dead. So, no nudity in this movie, okay? Right, okay. I believe you up until this point. So again, keeping it small and capture. Uh, comes a spider. And it comes over the top of the railing. I mean, fair enough, there's not no like full nudity, but like how a teenage girl showering. One going down the toilet, you think who's gonna get it this time? They're everywhere. Spider web behind the shoe, have seen that. Spider on the attack. That jumps on her face, I mean that is incredible. But that's, there, look, there is tits. A belly button, right, there's no nudity in this film. Bullshit, absolute bullshit. Down the plug all the goes. He sees her naked. A brother sees her naked. Aye. Quite a comical bit of comedy that.
I think it was flying out. I'm petrified. The spider's like eyes squaring off against them. Oh, he's terrified. I want you to take a step forward. Jeff Daniels is a great reaction there. Like, that thing can kill you. It's like game over. Oh, Bug Bash is back. Oh, yeah, he's gone to the, uh, the coach's house, hasn't he? It's a crack and a half. Dun 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 dun. Oh, he's just almost got one. The spider one, if you didn't get it. There you go, sees one. Realises that uh, the chemicals he's packing is not even good enough so they're starting to kill. and stands on it, doesn't he? <laughs> Boom! And that'll be a real spider dead. And that'll be to make it as gooey as possible. That's right, I'm bad. Enter Julian Sands. I didn't meet Julian Sands at Horicon. I was close to him. Uh, I mean, he was a last minute replacement. I'm trying to think pretty well. The Warlock, honey. The Warlock. But yeah, I've got some uh, filing to do here, mind. Just killing a rat. But I've done it clever there. Dropped it off camera instead. Rather than short suffering. A bit of hoo-ha when I talk about that because of um I mean that rat's definitely dead. Um the abyss, the rat scene, they're uh, not releasing it because of that scene for the Adrian or Budge to cut it cruelly and stuff. So now they start conspiring. Um, the coroners are the next ones to die. Um, and they sort of do a tremors thing here when they realise like 
the circumference of the kill zone and stuff like that and and he realised he lives in a murder central of the, the cow. Julian Sands tries to get a portent into this uh, influence. So we get the more of the point across. Yeah, and here comes uh, John Goodman. Now this is the team. It's not about like perimeters and what they're going to do and who's next and and obviously Julian Sands sees the picture on leaving which is the picture by his wife It's a bit of a Jaws vibe though, isn't it? You know, the mayor, the sheriff, um, the local authority all getting into it. Have they got a problem? Not got a problem. Uh, we're getting ready for Jeopardy here. Fucking size that microwave. The fuck off. Who dares eat popcorn straight out the microwave like that? Burn your fucking mush off. Of course, the spider's going to go straight in. See, he would have to probably um, be queued. Oh, it's, it's Wheel of Fortune he's playing. I like Wheel of Fortune as a kid. Coca-Cola. His wife there. These are both going to get killed. Strikes them both here. See him in the reflection. The spider in the ball, on the ball. Are they going to get it? Someone's going to get it. She's going to... Ah! Dead. Another film I was going to do a podcast for was Congo. And I put Congo down because it was a... Uh, only a few minutes longer on this. I don't know why I opted not to do Congo. I think as well with Congo, I've actually got the book, but I haven't got around to reading the book yet. Because um, I think if you're going to do a podcast like that, you kind of maybe just need to do the book. But um, I picked uh, Congo as something else that's not been released on DVD. The Blu-ray is out in Germany. That's where I got it from. So here we go. Sees the picture. Obviously sets it up earlier on when she's putting the pictures up and you just think she's putting pictures up and then obviously the camera's got a pan to the right here uh, after they've left. Take you there. You see the barn and boom spider web. So yeah. Oh we've got a message. Again, Beetlejuice vibes, New Zealand vibes for me personally, lovely house. Um they're dead. He just doesn't care. Doors open. There you go. Who are you coming? Dead. Spider has actually killed both of them. And another jump scare coming here. Straight out the mouth, which is totally a Spielberg trick from uh, out the nose there. Spielberg trick from um, Jaws. Yeah, both of them are dead. The barn. Julian's hands about to meet his demise as he tries to take on the uh, spider. Good old 
flashlight headlight look I'm trying to think what happens to the sheriff Jim and San gets killed but I don't think both of them get killed the big boy gets there uh, Julian Sands. Oh, cops off. That's what happens there. He fucks off. Hey, John Goodman, though, they're like, eating away, throwing stuff. <laughs> so the, the team is kind of split off. I don't think we actually even see the. Um, the mayor anymore um, but this is the realization of where the nest is it's a bit like what they're doing trams as well obviously Jeff Daniels has an excuse for this not happening because he's new to the area getting your your bearings and your circumference of the area ask you what's in the middle of here my house I do I live there Good old fashioned poor man's process in a car there. Give it a shake, have some light spinning around, and that's all you fucking need. I'm not a fan of green screen driving shots. I just don't think it sits well at all. Meanwhile, Julian Sands is on the level. We're pretty much getting to the last bit of this movie. Um, it's all about to happen at the house. Um, I don't think the assistant dies. I think the cop's gone. This guy's just got a hard on for the spider. There's a rat all eating up. There's a cat strangled. I mean, that to me, you know, there's a cat up there. Um, that is graphic as fuck. And obviously, I mean, this version I've got's quite old. Maybe that's not even cut there, but that is pretty sinister. That there's a cat just mangled with its head back. This is nowhere PG. And he's found the feeding thing and he's teasing it. And then boom! There's a couple of bits there as an editor I think I would have chopped out. It, you know, enough. He didn't need that second bit where it sort of hovers around his head. I think harsh cut. And um, that's mainly because last night that's all I was doing. How can I make it this short? How can I cut? But again, that's, you know... Would you have changed that back then to there and, you know, I would have. John Goodman's gone in there with thing. And then they get in the house and the house is swarming. And the big bads just walk past them. Yeah, Julian Sands jump scare quite quickly, upside down, spiders all over him. Oh my god, look at the professor. These are all on notice. Is that Michael J. Fox there? Family ties. That's Bird Gummer on the telly as well, isn't it? Bird Gummer has a Yeah, Michael J. Fox. And all 
fucking spiders are starting to come in there. You'd be fucked, like. Again, no CGI, load of spiders. You would just be like, oh. That's one way to uh, get away the spiders, make a massive I mean, look how many spiders there is now. They're just absolutely everywhere. Again, it's an 80s movie. It's all ramped up. Everyone upstairs! <laughs> I mean, the spiders aren't essentially out there to have the mother. So. He's lucky. One on his face. Cat-like reflexes. <laughs> And got that off him. White cloth. I think the last time I watched this, it was at work. I watched it over like three days or something. Um, it's a really cool thing about work, picking films up and then. I've been watching films that you know I normally wouldn't buy or something new, and people go, "Oh, we haven't seen that." Where well, you put it on at work, there's no point trying to watch a TV series at work because you just never can get a full episode in. Um, so it's always worth just watching a film. Um, I watched Smotherhood the other week. Um, watching a very Dundee movie at the moment. You know, you just that's what you're watching. Something on there in the background. Um, stuff I haven't seen. Look at that man. Like ah, what the fuck? I mean, that's obviously all like uh, practical effects. Me and Carl were actually talking about this. The guys just took a massive fall off one of them um, climbers. And Carl was saying on that, why do they put them outside the house if they can just use to get in the top window? Um, and here he comes, the exterminator. Obviously, that image uh, of John Goodman's on the back and the spine. I mean, look at all the spires over the head. I mean, there will be CGI on that. There'll be composites and stuff like that. Um, Spielberg was always pushing stuff like that um, coming off the back end of yeah, and there he goes through the floor like batteries not included and stuff like that um, but yeah we are in the last quarter now because the final showdown is about to happen as Jeff Daniels is now in the the basement and obviously no spiders around cold, damp, moist um, you know he's about to have it down and it's all set up prior you know like um the nail gun um, he was using, the wine is down there. I would still be having a word to be a realtor though, like the fact that your fucking doors are given like that, your floor. And there he comes, the music cue hits, the big bad's coming down for the final battle. Another big file transfer. Yeah, it's coming for you. Watch your hand, man. Just misses him. All right. Got some big files to do. Like, now oh, he's trapped in the basement. Can't get out. Sp this spider is everywhere, though. It's after him. This. Man versus spider. You do not fuck with him. He's got a shovel, that'll do it. Put on some electric sparks there. Seems a bit more light than they should be for like the rotation of the light. Let's see, it's coming across there. You're not going to be able to hear it. It's above me. Man versus spider. He's got a shovel. It's coming in any direction. He's just shoveled it to the floor. And there you go. The audience going to know this. It's not there yet, but it's actually on the shovel. Which is genius in a way. There goes the shovel. 
more explosions and that is one down but it's not the big bad because we haven't had the close-ups of the eye yet that was the general wasn't it a yeah, little one that you start to see the air uh, reflections in its eyes and shit which are quite sinister I think there's the pulsating sack picks up some kind of crack it open set fire to it I'll be right back Setting them for you. Smash the end off. Well, now he takes that tuck to get that pitch perfect. Yeah, there it is, the big bad. Oof. Take that down. You're whining on you. Now, you'd be like, oh, you'd be able to get out of that. I once got um, crushed by loads of VHSs. And it's amazing how much weight happens with small things on top of each other. The mass build up of weight on you. Especially, like, the realisation of what the hell has gone on. And, like... You know, you couldn't write it out. There it comes, coming down like, ah, run! Run! <laughs> Bats it across the room. Right, okay. The final match. Man versus spider. Fucking... Throw from fucking... Coming to get you. I would love to see there was no spiders harmed during the making of this. Look at that though, again, just want to do because a good year. Little bit of comedy in there. He's going to get himself free now. Spider's going to get him though. You fucking shit. <laughs> how fast it went under there, like, zoom. Now oh, he's got a aerosol. Gonna burn it out. Great shot, that. Great shot. I was kind of shot you were getting video games and all that when you were like again, just showing the size of like the giant giantism, like from uh, um, Land of the Giants and stuff like that. And just all the great camera angles. Setting fire at all. If you haven't seen it, there we go. There's its evil eyes. It's like, you can't see me. I love the end of the script. Oh, the man's going to fight a spider. And it's done so well. Like, you think, oh, he's going to fight a small spider. Yeah, but if he gets bit, he's dead. But how they've done it, the environment, how they've pre-set it up, you know what I mean? There's so much going on with this. Now, when you stick your head in the fucking tube, man. Was flying out, I'm done. You would just be blasting it now. He's lucky. He's lucky. Bit paralyzed here. 
Let's go get him. Come up his legs for the big finale bite. He's, he's still apparent. He's terrified of it. Up the leg. And you can see a little stick there if you were really going to criticise it, pushing it up his leg there at the back. It's got a little bit of rail on there, but I think that's the only thing I've noticed so far. Bite him, a walk. Bite him, a walk. Right in them eyes again. A little bit more. A little bit more. And you can see him in the reflection, which is awesome. And on the bit of wood. Smacks the wood into the fire. It's still going to come get you. Get your nail gun, mate. There it is. It's back. It's on fire now. <laughs> it's like it's <laughs> just when you thought it was dead. It's not dead. And boom! Nail gun into the thing. Classic Hollywood ending of a movie. Still like hundreds of spiders out there, which would need a mass quarantine zone. John Goodman, he'll sort it out though, he'll fix it all. But the big bad from down there is done. Obviously the copper doesn't die, he does a runner. I think the assistant stays for the family. John Goodman at the rescue. And then they move to the city, back to the city. Looks like San Francisco. Yeah, it is San Francisco, the port of San Francisco. So here's the end and see what they do. They're just in their apartment, aren't they? Finally drinking that bottle of wine he didn't want to break. That'll be the inner thing. That's the wine he didn't want to throw. That's why there's so much on that wine. But the thing is, the small town, he's got the practice now. Once the spider problem was out of the way, he's the doctor that saved the town. No, that's it. Oh yeah, and now there's earthquakes. That's right. Again, ends up with a little bit of a joke. You know, it's not setting it up for a sequel. What's the sequel to Arachnophobia? Earthquake. Jeff Daniels is back in it. <laughs> yeah. And I walk off. It would have been dead funny if you seen like a little spit, but again, a quick shot, the wine spilling. But yeah. End credits going up, bottle of wine is still dripping away in shot, which is good. It's not like freeze framed on it. And we fade to black. Um, wow, that flew over. I really, really enjoy that film, and I think that film needs more availability now. Um, as I said, I'm not 100% sure if it is on any kind of streaming formats um, it should be um, I don't understand why it isn't but that's it um, it definitely needs a blu-ray re re release there's no additional features I don't think many of the Disney titles seem to wander across to 88 Arrow um, 101 films and something like that but I think, you know, there's probably a good few documentaries out there. There's a Jeff in there. Um, but, yeah, I don't think there's any hidden ending. Um, as I say, I want to wish Carl get well soon because everyone seems to be hit with this flu at the moment, what's going around, um, which is pretty bad out there. But, yeah, I'm just trying to work out what's not uh, transferring well here.
Oh yeah, sorry, it's all here. Right, well, I'm just gonna press fast forward because I don't think there's a hidden ending, but it is that error. Flash, Gorn, Prey of the Roller Boys, Creature Features. Um, it's been a while since we've had a really good spider carrying a film. Um, this has been rumored to get remade for ages. Um, I think it's. I think it could do a remake. I think the original is fine, but it's one of those films that, you know, in the modern generation, it could have a good remake. And when it does have a remake, this would see a resurgence. Um, filmed in California, Venezuela, um, Flying Squirrels. Good to thank you. Okay, Technicolor, the normal Shigbanigans, copyrighted, all rights reserved, distributed by Benavista. And then Amblin Entertainment, so no hidden extras. Well, how many how many spider sacks out of ten? I wanna say it's an eight. I don't think it could get much better. Um I think you would have to, I think to get it more you would either have to go full comedy or more horror. Um, I think it's a nice balance. It's a feel-good movie. It is a family movie, which is very edgy. It should be. A, it should not be a PG. Uh, but I think it's aged really well, and I think it really needs some justification on its artwork. As I said, I've seen artwork where you've got the full moon, the nice sleepy hollow town at the bottom, arachnophobia across there, and that's it. And it's like, well, what's that about? And like one shot has the spider dangling in the moon i think that's quite a good silhouette so thank you very much for listening to this goodbye for now